Hello, everyone. My name is Greg Horrocks. I'm a customer success engineer here at ShareFile. Um, I've been with ShareFile for about a year and a half now um, on the product adoption side of things. And I'm also joined today uh, by Evan Georges. I'll go ahead and let uh, Evan introduce himself here. Yep. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining today. I'm Evan Georges. I've been with uh, the company for a little over a decade now, played a couple different roles around our various products, but most recently and you know over the last few years definitely focused around ensuring share file environments for our customers are running smoothly securely efficiently so i work as uh, you know helping customers define use cases uh, pre-sales and adding licenses as a sales engineer but i also do support customers post sales for adoption and just understanding the best of how they can get the product to work for them and hopefully we can touch more on that today awesome thank you evan so just want to start off by saying thank you. Thank you for taking some time out of your day um, to be here with us and um, hoping you get something out of today's webinar on admin settings. And just going through a little bit of the agenda here, we'll touch on some branding. Um, we'll take a look at how to customize the look and feel of not only your share file uh, web interface, but also how some of your emails that get sent out from share file look. Uh, we'll touch on some of the security settings that you have available as an admin in the account. Uh, we'll look at file retention and kind of uh, what setting that will actually look like and ways to change that within your uh, folders. We'll take a look at some reporting and look at storage utilization on your account. We'll go through some of the advanced preferences that you have available and also how you can manage those users, not only um, employee users, but client users alike. Um, then we'll also touch on some of the other backend administrative settings like IP restrictions, terms and conditions, and, and so forth. Um, we'll also highlight some of the resources that we have available for you to really help you learn and get the most out of ShareFile. And also, if you do run into a technical issue, how to contact support to get help. All right, so with that, I'll go ahead and switch over to my ShareFile account. So the first thing we'll take a look at um, today is we're going to look at branding, kind of customizing the look and feel of your account. And this is something that you can, um, you can delegate to other users on the account if you just want them to be able to um, manage the, the look and feel. So we'll come into admin settings to start. We'll go under company account information and we'll click on edit company branding. So drilling down from the top, you do have an account name. Now this isn't your you know, official name or URL, we'll get into that in a second, but this is just a, a general name for your account. Um, and that can be changed up to 160 characters. Edit account periods here. This is going to give you um, access to change how the page looks when you log in. So a page title is gonna be shown up here at the top um, of my browser window on the tab, the logo, it's clearly what I have here at the top left that will always show within your um, share file view. Um, and one thing to note here, when you're going through some of the branding, we're gonna have these little tool tips or little information bubbles here. These always give additional information if you're wondering maybe how large a file is or what, what kind of file formats are accepted. Um, hover over these, these will give you additional information. So in this case, the logo in the upper left can't be taller than 80 pixels and no wider than 400 pixels, just to give you some reference there. Header background color and accent color, these are simply the colors up here. Um, and these can be used, uh, you can use hex codes here if you have some specific company colors. Um, so that's a basic control of, of you know, how the share file account looks. But if you want some more advanced um, options here, we'll go and click on the advanced button there. And this is really gonna drill down into the, the specific key areas of your account that you can do additional um, branding changes too. So we had the, the browser options here. We do have a, a fave icon icon. You can change if you want that little icon in the tab to change. Header options is kind of what we went through before. If you do want to add a background image there, that's an additional option. And that's kind of up here. You can tile something. The login page, this is another um, crucial area to, to manage. So um, if I were to go to, let me pull up a quick incognito window and go back to my login page. So right now, this is how my current login page looks. 
Um, I've customized that image. That's actually an image that I took with a, with a drone, pretty proud of it. Um, but I've really customized the look and feel of it. And this will help your customers really understand or know that, um, or your employees know that they're landing in the right spot. Um, so this image here um, is the logo that was at the top right. My background image, same as the, uh, the web interface, you can change the, the colors that go along with it. You can also add some text um, on the account too, um, to let your users um, get any type of information. Maybe you want them to accept something or you have a link in there to go somewhere else. Email options here. So this is going to be when share file notifications are sent out by our system. Um, so you can add a, a header and a footer, um, and then you can change the, the logo. So if you have a, a smaller logo you wanna use or something that's specific to email, um, you can change that here. So that's pretty much, co much covers the, um, the company branding part of the account. Scrolling down here, we do have another option under company branding, and this is your subdomain. So um, by default, you're gonna have something in here because this is the account. This is the, uh, the page I'm going to here is Greg H. That's my subdomain, that's my primary. Uh, but you can add up to two additional subdomains if you wanted to customize maybe how external users access your account, you, or if you have a long uh, subdomain and you want something shorter to give out, maybe you're putting it on a business card or something like that, you just want a quick subdomain, you can put those here. And this will check um, other share file accounts. Um, so you wanna make sure that uh, it's something unique. All right, next thing we're gonna go through is we're gonna take a look at some of the um, security settings. So um, one thing to note here, this is an admin webinar today. So not everyone attending might have uh, full access to all of the settings in here. If, if you don't, maybe it's something that, um, you know, we'll pique some interest and maybe you can reach out to your administrator, get some of these permissions. Um, but we'll go the security area here. And the first thing we're gonna take a look at um, is uh, the two-factor authentication I wanted to, uh, to note here. So this is a fairly new um, thing. So if we were to run into our employee section here, kind of going on a tangent, but I just wanted to highlight this. So typically um, uh, only the account owner would be able to reset the two-step verifications on accounts. Um, so a very big ask was to allow other users to uh, reset the two-factor for um, users on the account. So this is something that we have actually given as long as somebody has the manage employees um, permission on their account, they can reset the uh, two-step verification for somebody and allow them to get into the account. So that's just wanted, wanted to highlight that uh, before we really get into um, other things. So um, going back into admin settings, let's take a look at some of the security alerts. Uh, so security alerts um, on an account are going to be notifications that are sent out to either admins, the employees themselves, or if you have this um, set up for client users, they will receive a notification. So security uh, notifications are, these are basic. Um, user signs in from a different country. They sign in from you know, a different city using a different device or multiple failed sign-in attempts um, or a suspicious file is uploaded. Every file is gonna be scanned going into share file. Um, and so these notifications can be configured to go to the admin, the employees, or the client user themselves. Um, you can configure, up, configure that the way you'd like here. Um, one new thing we do have is if you want to enable these um, uh, additional users to get these notifications. Maybe you have a, a security group separate from your account owner that needs to receive these notifications. You can specify which users, or if you have a distribution group set up, um, so a list of users, you can put that distribution group in here, um, and you can have up to two distribution groups um, additional to, to add to these notifications. Um, so just wanted to highlight that there. Um, and while we're on the topic of the alert settings, I did want to show a couple and kind of show you how it would look. Let's say somebody were to upload a suspicious file. Um, this is an example of a email notification that comes through. Um, as an admin, I received this and it gives me the name, the size of the file, the owner, and um, there's a link to 
directly view um, the quarantine files. So that's going to be a section under the admin settings, quarantine files. You can see here, this is just a test virus account that I uploaded earlier. Um, it, sh it shows who uploaded the file, the date. Um, and from here, the admin can decide and determine whether they want to delete that permanently, or if it was just like a false positive, they could uh, restore the file. Um, and then, so let's say somebody did have a security alert that came through. Um, not only does the email come through to the admin, but they'll also um, have something within their user account in ShareFile. So if I navigate over to people and I go to my, um, this person in particular was a client user, you can see there, there, there's a pretty plain security alert here letting me know that something happened. Um, if I navigate down into that user, um, we're gonna have some tabs here. Activity and security alerts is gonna be here. And you can see a couple uh, alerts come through today. There is that attempted malware upload that um, I did this morning um, and also multiple failed sign-in attempts. So right from here, um, you'll be able to see all of the alerts that came through for this particular user. And we give direct access to disable their um, account, log them out, um, even reset their password or their two-step verification. So that would require uh, re-enrollment in that. Um, another thing you can do is remove from all your folders um, or remove from your folders. Uh, so we have some options here to kind of remediate that. Um, so the next thing kind of along the remediation aspect of things is actual automatic remediation. Um, so I wanted to show that here. We'll go back into settings We'll go into security and we're gonna go into login and security policy. So we do have um, auto remediation. So this is similar to the, note, the security alerts, but this kind of goes a step further. And this is actually going to um, automatically uh, address some of these security issues that may, be, um, that, that may have more impact on your share file account. So impossible travel, somebody who's logging in from different from multiple countries in a very short span of time, uh, a high download activity uh, trend. So, you know, something that's out of the normal for a user to be downloading a lot of files from your account um, or a high number of IPs. So maybe they're not in different countries, but they're logging in from um, multiple IPs in a short period of time. Um, these can be enabled on your account. And what this will do is that it'll actually require the user to uh, reset their password. So this is essentially kicking them out of their account and requiring them to uh, reset up their password. Um, while we're here, we can take a look at some of the other login and security policies that we have. Um, wanted to touch on um, single sign-on. So um, I'm sorry, two-step verification. So two-step verification, by default is gonna be enabled for um, employee users, but not for client users. So if you have a lot of external clients that are connecting in, you wanna, you wanna maintain that security posture and require an additional um, security uh, verification to come through for them, you can enable that here. Um, you can configure the lockout configuration. Um, so if you wanted to change the number of attempts that users have before they're locked out of their account, um, and then you can also change um, the lockout period that, that they are uh, locked out for if they miss their password. Um, other configuration options you have down here, you have some authentication. Um, so uh, logging out inactive users, and then how often they'll have to re-authenticate. If you wanted your users, you know, maybe after seven days, they need to re-log into their account. Especially, this is especially important if they're using some of our desktop tools, um, you know, like ShareFile for Windows or the Outlook plugin. Um, single sign-on here. If if you do. Um, if you do require a single sign-on for your organization, um, you can set up that configuration here, uh, SAML 2.0 configuration. Um, one thing to note here is there is an option to require SSO. So our new login page, um, the first step is 
uh, typing in your, your email address, that's your, your user identifier. And then the system will redirect that user if they're not an admin um, to the single sign-on provider that you configure here. Um, so that's important to know and, and just note that administrative users um, are going to have the option to log in with their share file native um, credentials just to prevent um, you know, any issues if they're not able to get into SSO and they're an administrator, uh, we do give that option for them to log in with their regular share file credentials. Okay. Um, and one thing to note here, if you, if you do have a uh, customer success engineer um, on your account, um, Myself, is, I'm listed here in my account, um, but we can definitely help you um, configure your single sign-on if you do need some help with it um, or run through some of these other options that we've shown here. Um, that's always a, a, a great place to get some help. All right. So next thing we'll take a look at is we'll go through um, some of the device security options. So that's another option here under security. Um, and this is for when you're using the share file uh, mobile applications. Um, this will give you some common um, configurations, um, you know, from most accessible where, you know, self-destruct is not enabled, it's not requiring a pin, you know, to more secure and maybe online only where it will limit um, access to um, saving files for offline access, things like that. Um, so that can be configured here. You can also do custom configuration. Um, and once these settings are saved, that will apply to anybody using um, some of our mobile applications. Yeah, Greg, I can add to that too. We have sure. some customers that, you know, perhaps have board meetings or things like that, where they have published iPads. They need to have secure document access. The mobile app is a great resource uh, without, you know, requiring some connection outside of just, you know, the internet, unless you are able to make these files available offline. So having some control over uh, the device that has share file that's logged in as a user, having these controls over it can be important. But again, yeah, keep in mind that this is specific to the share file mobile application. Yep. And just to highlight that, um, whenever you're logged into your account, apps at the top, right? If you click that, that'll bring you to uh, the page where you can go through of our, our Windows applications, our apps for Mac, and then our mobile, which will link you to the Play Store and the Apple um, at the App Store. Um, so if you want some more information about those, you can click there. Um, but yeah, this kind of highlights the, the different policies that you can set surrounding those, those mobile applications. Um, and then finally, you know, just to touch on some of some of the other um, options that you do have. So within the security um, tab in the admin settings, we do have password requirement um, configurations. So you can change the number of characters to, to meet your organization's um, standards. Um, you also have the ability to, um, so this is where you can see the quarantine files like we talked about earlier. Just wanted to touch real quick on the edit super user group. Um, so this is usually something we talk about in like there are getting started webinars, but I just wanted to highlight it here. The super user group are is a list of users that aren't necessarily admins, um, but these are power users. These are users that are gonna have access to every folder and every file that's on the account. So that, config, or that list of users is gonna be here under edit super user group. And then also if your organization doesn't want to show that you know, somebody else has access to this data and you don't want them to show on the people tab within a folder, this is where you would come and actually turn on hide super user group from folder access. So um, if you do have some um, users that are concerned that, hey, I thought it's just me and this other person that have access to something, um, you can hide that, that super user group um, from the, the people menu within a folder. Wanted to highlight that. Keep in mind that these users are the ones that are like, you know, in your IT environment, you can see maybe as like a sys type admin where mm -hmm. they need to have controlled access over all of the documents, the files that your end users are going to be putting in share files. So it, this would be that group or that user 
that you would define to be able to come and run reports or to view data on behalf of a user with this sort of permission. Absolutely. All right, and then the last thing we I wanted to touch on here in, in my section is we're gonna take a look at file retention. Um, so within the admin settings, we'll go to advanced preferences. Um, we'll take a look at file settings. So one of the things that we have here is a default retention policy. Um, so to start, this is when turned on, um, this is going to be a, um, a retention policy for files on new folders. So this will not go back if you set, if I were to come here and set a, a one week expiration on files, this is not going to go back to all my folders and start deleting stuff that's older than seven days. Um, so this is gonna be for new top level folders. Um, after seven days, files will um, expire or delete. So if I save this here, go into my shared folders, I'm gonna go ahead and create a top level folder here. Let's say uh, admin settings webinar. So when I create this folder here, we'll see it automatically added a seven day retention policy. This can be changed by a folder admin later on. Um, so this isn't something that's just set in stone. Everything is seven days. Um, and like I said, this doesn't affect any of your older folders. So if I were to come in here and I wanted to actually update this, we can go into the adva advanced um, folder settings. And you can see here, I can change this if I wanted to change the day or just set it back to unlimited. I can go ahead and save that. Um, so again, and that keep in added. mind the reason Greg's able to do this is because he's logged in as an admin where you yes. can lock this down to other users to not be able to change that, let's say. Right. So, you know, speaking on that, so if I go into a folder here, um, the people who are going to be able to modify the retention policy on this folder is going to be anyone with the admin permissions. Um, so if they have admin, they'll have more options. They'll be able to come in here and actually change the retention. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're assigning permissions. That folder admin can be pretty powerful. Um, so just something to keep keep note of. Um, and then while we're here, you know, actual folder admins have have access to change additional options within a folder. Um, you can change the entire folder expiration date. Um, you can change the file versioning. You can change how files are viewed, what sort order. Um, and then if you do utilize templates, you can apply a template directly to this folder if you have a long list of sub subfolders or directories that you want uh, added to this. So those, those are the topics that I wanted to, to cover today. Um, we'll switch it over. We'll switch gears over to, um, to Evan here. And he'll take a look at uh, a few additional things we wanted to touch on today. So let me stop sharing here, Evan. Great. Let me go ahead and transition this over. All right. One of the best parts of this is hiding the meeting controls. All right. We're live. So with my portion, we're going to focus more on the monitoring aspect of the account, you know, how you can track uh, users' usage, you know, audit the usage. We'll look a little bit more into some of the advanced preferences that Greg was talking about uh, around the more so in the file settings and some of the other various tools that you guys have access to. We can talk about uh, user management, talk about provisioning and a couple other things. So jumping into the admin side here, let me pop in. So when you guys are logging in as admins on the account, obviously if you're someone that's in here, you don't see admin settings, that, that, that means that you obviously don't have specific permissions or access to allow you to do that. Although I would assume everyone in this webinar would be an admin. It's just something to note that not everyone who is a licensed user is necessarily going to have access to admin settings. And all of that's going to depend on some of those permissions that we looked at with Greg earlier that you can give or grant or deny 
a specific user to have access to, which we'll also focus on. But going into admin settings here, something that's missing from my section here that some of you may see, as obviously this is more of a demo account, uh, is going to be our billing section. So for some of our accounts, we do have you know full self-service level billing that would allow you to do things like view receipts, edit billing information for your contacts, uh, in some instances, allowing you to uh, pay or update that sort of information as well. So if you guys notice, it would be under the company account info. Uh, and it's a tab that would say billing, like I said. So again, you can edit credit card details in there. Uh, if you don't see that, or if you have questions about uh, your billing or how that would work, uh, you know, our team here, Greg, myself, you know, mentioning that you do have the ability to contact us. We, you would see us more uh, as a resource for use case discussion. On the billing side, you should have an account manager. If they have not reached out to you, obviously contact one of us so we can get you in contact with that. But if you have been in contact with your ShareFile account manager, they would be the best resource, the best person for you to contact uh, if you do have any questions around the billing section. But again, as noted for some of our customers, it is a little bit newer if you do have the billing to have that self-service level. So if you do have access to that, uh, we have a good knowledge base article uh, within our product documentation that we can share with you. And just for the fun of it, I'll even just pull it up here, uh, docs.sharefile.com. You can really search for anything within there, but uh, the billing section will give you more information. Again, just understanding and context about what you're looking at. Keep in mind, if you have the, your account manager's information, if you have any questions, please contact them. Alrighty, so jumping back to what we have uh, within this section now, Greg talked about the quarantine of files. So I just wanted to touch on that uh, quickly before I move on. So one thing to note is, you know, with ShareFile, we're providing this website, this service that you guys can log into. Uh, we also provide you the flexibility from a storage perspective of leveraging storage that we maintain and provide or, uh, you know, storage that you guys might manage uh, yourself privately. And you, know, you can set up a, a, a web service to communicate out and, and man manage and maintain the data yourself. And in a lot of cases, our customers like to benefit from that, but it's a flexibility that we offer uh, to most of our customers. So uh, one thing to note with quarantine files, this is across... Um, in this case, share file managed storage. So in this, my account, I have share file managed storage. This is what's provided within most of your licensing. Uh, but you can look at your plans, but any file that's uploaded is gonna go through antivirus scan. And so everyone's account and what we see here in this, it's set to block sharing to download. And as you saw in Greg's, it notifies the admin. We do have other settings that can be applied through our support where we can turn it off and just warn of it, but allow movement or we could uh, take it even further and block the sharing of any file as it's coming in that has not even been scanned. So as files are coming into ShareFile or any file service, you know, there hopefully some sort of avenue where it, the document can be scanned to make sure that it's safe, that it's protected. So we have that built into our service. And like I said, there you can take a more strict approach to where any file cannot be accessible until it's been scanned. Every account by default is it scans, it sees an infected file, it blocks it. Um, but if you guys do have more questions on that, let us know. Uh, but like I said, it's really those three levels. Uh, the level that we come with as default is, like I said, where it's blocking it. So it's already in a secure space for you guys. Uh, and it's good to know from a security perspective that we are scanning those documents. Now, in the event that you are managing the data yourself, that you guys are maintaining the data yourself, uh, you might want to have the ability to send that data to some other monitoring type tool, let's say DLP. And so if you are, if you are a customer, and if you're not, then this doesn't apply to you, but if you're a customer of ShareFile that is you know, managing the data the storage yourself with an on-premises storage zone controller, uh, that you can have the ability to send data that's coming through ShareFile over to a DLP uh, over this protocol ICAP. So if you have it, that's something that you can look up to see if your tool supports ICAP. Again, it's a specific protocol. 
And it would be something to look into as another security advantage, something on the roadmap that we are exploring uh, with ShareFile and cloud storage is to be able to offer a little more granularity for that DLP. Right now, as I mentioned, it does have the ability to, to block and scan and, and quarantine files, but we don't offer any further policy outside of that. Um, so something to keep in mind uh, with, with updates and things that are coming with ShareFile and great reasons to work with people like Greg and myself just to understand what sort of things we're working on. Uh, but again, if you guys have questions around that, I just wanted to jump back in and highlight that real quick, uh, but something that we can dive more deeply into again uh, as your customer success team. So moving that aside, company account info, this is where branding was. Uh, the next thing is reporting. So we want to be able to understand what our users are doing. We wanna be able to audit. We wanna be able to know on a frequent basis. So ShareFile offers the ability to pull uh, Excel or CSV you know, type data. So we can set recurring reports that can run on a specific process or reports that I can just run ad hoc. Again, the ability to run a report is something that not everyone will be able to do. It's something that's a permission that you grant to a user and which that we'll look at here shortly. But it's pretty easy to come into the reporting section and to create a report. As we see with the various reporting types, it's all going to be telling us a different story of who the users are, you know, what sort of access do they have, who is sharing or requesting data. So what's the breakdown of that? What's the overall usage? So, you know, a complete activity um, and what sort of stuff has changed? What files do we have on our account? You know, who has the, a ton of data that we need to look into? Uh, and in this case, it's all individual reports that you can run and pretty straightforward as far as the date for how far you want to go, the name of it. Uh, are we basing this on a particular user or the account? Going to that thing of setting it recurring, I always like to suggest for my customers to set a to set recurring reports. Typically, I like users and usage. I feel like it tells a good story and something that you guys can explore yourselves within your own account. Uh, but typically, I'll run it for yesterday because we see these recurring reports will, will run, at, I think, 12 in the morning. So if you set this for today, uh, it won't be the best data. Uh, but as you see, you choose a location within your account to where you want this folder uh, to go. So in this case, I have folders called usage and users. It's just a, a folder that I can grant any of my colleagues or other admins access to. And I'm determining that I want to create this report on a daily basis. And so what it's really doing is it's just saving it, running this report, and I actually have it so files are deleted after a day. So it should be keeping it pretty frequent for me, uh, which is great. Now, this data is something that you guys will have to look into and make sense of what that means to your end users. But each report does have specific data sets that it can provide to you. So great, valuable information. Uh, as you can see, you will have to download or, you know, to open if you need to apply your own filters, those sort of things. Uh, but I think everyone knows how to go about that. We also do offer some abilities through, you know, APIs and to gather and collect data as well. So again, something to talk about with your customer success team. Uh, but again, we go into settings, admin settings, company account info, reporting. So again, recurring report just took me to a folder versus these ad hoc reports. If I just need to come in and grab data on the fly, I also have the ability to grab a report, set the date, not set it for recurring. And it's just going to create it and save it right here for me. It does give me the ability to, once it's completed, to view it in app or to download if I need to do any more. But it's the same thing. You know, it's just a report that you're able to run. Uh, the next component is, you know, this is all tabled data. And, you know, that's all great, but, you know, we admins have been saying, and I think it's pretty obvious, you know, having something that you can visualize a little more uh, would be beneficial. And so our product teams thought the logical approach for us to roll this out initially would be around storage. So it's out of the reporting section, but as an admin, you should have storage section that can see your storage zones who uh, or is using storage on your account is the newer section. So if you see storage usage here, this allows you to look at how much data individual users have on your account. Uh, although I can jump into those other reports to look a little bit more at the activity, this is more of just an alert 
of, okay, we have one terabyte allocated. That's the standard for you know each per license that comes with the share file managed storage. Great, this person's adhering to it. We can take some stricter approaches here. In this case, all I can do right now is I can notify them of usage. I should be able to click into the user and I can view folders and activity. I can you know, do a lot of stuff for my users just to understand some of that data. So storage usage is something I would advise you guys go and check out uh, just to get a better understanding. Let's see, so moving on, advanced preferences. This is where you're gonna be able to set a lot more uh, restrictions around what's on the account. Uh, one of the things right now, if you are on our premium license of ShareFile, uh, we are starting to roll out artificial intelligence, you know, AI type capabilities. Greg did review the security alerts and, you know, like the impossible traveler. That's machine learning. That's great technology. That should be if you're on our advanced or premium to have that. With AI, it's going to be taking it. Uh, in this case, what we have right now is uh, this is that first iteration, I'd say, of uh, classification, being able to understand documents. We use AWS for our services that we build our application on to provide you guys. And there's some great benefits within the artificial intelligence uh, space there. And so our product teams have been working really hard. Two of the features that we have right now, secure share recommender. So this is if you are on a premium account, let's say you have healthcare PII type data, we have a mechanism that is able to scan the document. We're not holding on or saving any of that data. It's, it's rather just to understanding if that document contains PII. And if so, to flag to a user who is sharing or requesting, I guess in this case sharing, but to, that they might be doing something that you guys would not recommend. So we'll look at share settings here in a second so I can talk about what defaults are for your account versus what you're just offering for your users to choose from. This one would be like someone's trying to go off of the secure defaults that you wanna set. It's identifying it. It's letting the user know, hey, it looks like what you're doing uh, is not recommended. So it's it's not doing anything you know preventative in the sense that it's blocking that. It's just prescribing, hey, you know, you're doing something that's out of compliance. Uh, and a good starting point for us, and definitely more to come on that front. The other, which is a uh, beta feature, but a part of our projects, other webinars that we have in our webinar series, projects, share file premium type features. This is a feature that's focused around requesting document request lists from your clients that you're interacting with. So we have an AI powered engine that you can just, you know, jot some ideas in there. I'm working with this client. I need to get these documents and it will create a, a list of line items that you can uh, associate and send on to a client to send back to you. So that's a time that we can focus on with the different webinar or the resources that we have. But these are some features as a premium customer that you can enable or disable on your account. If you don't see that, don't worry about it. Uh, the other things that we have, so email settings, if you're working with clients and you know, you're, you're getting notifications that they're blocking our you know, SF notifications email, we do offer our customers to configure their own SMTP. So if you have your own SMTP server, you want the messages to come from your team, we do offer your team the ability to set that up uh, within email settings. And then a couple other features with messaging, if you want to offer encrypted messaging, if you want to give your users the ability to add secondary email addresses, uh, keep in mind, obviously, alternate email addresses, it's you have to think through how that logically makes sense to your company if there are other aliases or, or users that they have uh, and something that you can turn on or off. Uh, so file settings, this is an important one. And I know that we're strapped on time. I want to give you guys some good time to ask questions. So. Uh, this is important. I won't try to rush through it, but something that I do strongly advise all of you look at when you get a chance. So file settings, the share settings, and the request settings. So this is something that's newer within the last six, seven months that we've opened up to our admins to set the defaults. You know, prior to that, the default was that if I'm if I'm just an end user and I'm sharing a document with someone or requesting something and I don't alter what those access control settings are, it was going to default to just say, hey, whoever you are that gets the link, put in your name and email and do what you need to do. 
Uh, but as you see, that doesn't require a login. So that's something that can be seen as an anonymous activity. So in my case, and in this case, we change the default to require sign-in. So someone has to create an account. They have to log in based off the email you send it to. Uh, if two-factor or multi-factor is enabled, obviously they have to do that. So in the case of my account, I've actually disabled. I don't want any ability for anonymous type sharing on my account. If I'm any, any end user, I don't want them to even have the option to do it. I can disable it. Now, if I want to give my users the option to do that, I can, but I can set the default for if I'm just someone that's doing it really quick and I'm not looking at what those settings are, I'm not trying to edit them, I can choose what I want that to default to. So in some cases, you know, we do have customers that would prefer to default to this. Uh, it's part of that shared responsibility. We just give you the ability to control it as an admin. So good to know that you have this option specific to sharing, so pushing data out and requesting getting data in. So you have both of these and something to make sure is that they each do have their own little save here. So you have to make sure that you're hitting that save option as you're making those changes. Default retention, we already saw that. Versioning is great. If you guys are doing uh, editing, co-editing with Microsoft documents, or if you have users that are working, opening, saving documents back to the same location, Versioning is great because you can go back as long as the file has that same name and same back to the same place, how many other versions we want to go. Keep in mind that this takes up storage too. So for each file, uh, it takes up a, a version of that. It's you know on the storage. It's not like it's some crazy number, but something good to go and see what your versioning settings are right now. We usually look at five to 10 as I'm working through this with customers. I'd suggest you keep it around there as well. Uh, let's see, other avenues. So we've been looking at this whole demo through the web application. That's where I'm doing the admin settings, but you may be granting your end users access to interact with ShareFile, not just through the web application, but maybe we wanna extend this to Outlook. Uh, in some instances, ShareFile is used as a FTP client or FTPS, not SFTP, but we, are, we support FTPS and FTP. We act as a client, not a server. And uh, you can also enable that and get that set up. We have great documentation. Uh, but from an apps perspective, we have the web application here, the Outlook plugin. If you're on the old Outlook, we also have a, G a, a plugin for Gmail, uh, but you can install this as an add-in. In old Outlook, you can add it as an app on the background for new Outlook or Outlook Online. And those are great features because it does extend the reach of share file and sending and requesting to other components. So if I were to be composing an email, I could choose to you know, encrypt the body of the message. Share file has features here that I'm able to control. Now this demo isn't about the Outlook plugin, but keep in mind that it's extending the security of sending and wrapping the access controls of share file to Outlook. We also extend that to Finder on Mac, uh, but also, the uh, Explorer on Windows. So you can also set it up as a virtual drive or a map drive. Again, this is just accessing on the back end to share file. So we can set this up with group policy. We can mount folders. Uh, you could do whatever you need to. And really all that this does is it gives your users access to their documents through Explorer or through Finder. I can open it. It's saving back to the share file application. So as admins, you do have the ability to, oops, that's not what I meant to do, to go to this link that we can provide as well. And there are various tools that you can install to grant your users access. We do also offer you the ability to turn these tools off as well. So that's why you see these check boxes, which means we can't stop someone from downloading something, but we could stop them from logging into your specific account with share file. So you have the ability to also determine whether these apps can be used or not. All righty. Uh, outside of that, I think the last thing I wanted to talk about is the users section. So at, as an admin, you know, there's different types of people. There's employees, which we see as a licensed user. This is someone that needs to benefit from the full functionalities of what we're doing here on ShareFile. Typically, this is 
an employee of your company, uh, a domain user. Uh, a client, as we see, uh, is someone who's third party, someone outside of your organization that you're sharing this data with. We understand in some cases that these lines get blurred based on your use case or how you guys are using ShareFile within departments and teams. But the way we call it employee, uh, and we are going to have some improvements to this management actually coming up pretty soon. So be on the lookout. Uh, we have actually sent out some resources around some new client management type experiences. So other things to keep from a roadmap perspective is all this stuff's going to be improving. But for current state and what we offer right now, employees are what we call a licensed user. Clients, these are those third parties. This is someone that I shared a resource with. They either had to log in. They're not a licensed user in my account. Um, you know, if I'm someone that I just shared a resource with that only had access to something for two days, then, you know, that's really all that I had access to. But either way, I can create them here manually. We do also offer a tool if you wanted to create license users in bulk called the user management tool, which works with Windows AD. If you're an admin in ShareFile that has the ability to create users and you are on a machine that's domain joined, you can install this tool called the user management tool and it will look at your internal Active Directory structure, your OUs, as you guys are able to go through and grant that, and then provision users into ShareFile and uh, potentially even with specific permissions called policy-based administration. So if you are not leveraging this, if it is something that you're creating and, and you would like to do something like this more in bulk, again, contact your CSE if you can, hit this icon, contact your success engineer, that's what I look like. Uh, Let's Connect just takes you to a nice web form that you fill out and it uh, sends me an email or whoever you have on there. Pretty nice stuff. Uh, but outside of that, I can also just manually come in here and edit these people. So clicking into that, going into the cog icon, we do have contextual based search so I can search for people if I have a long list of users. But uh, it, administering people on my account is a, is a huge thing just to understand what they can or can't do, how they're logging into my account, what I've given them access to. So in this case, this person just has the ability to, okay, access company permissions. So it looks like they're able to uh, do some branding. They're able to add users for me, uh, but they can't really do much else. So again, strategizing how you guys want to set up your users in bulk or what sort of permissions make most sense. It's pretty logical as you're looking through this, what they can or can't do. But if you do have questions or you want to set a time, again, to just talk through what that would look like, go back to that, ask your CSE. We're happy to work with you guys. It's something that we do outside of these webinars, you know, all the time with our clients. So it's good to have an approach as far as like, what's a good baseline for our end users uh, and to the extent that you, I am on a premium type account, so I do have some other features like electronic signature and some of those AI things that we looked at. So we can also control if we are on that setting, who has access to those sorts of resources too. Yeah, Evan, that's a great point. There were a couple questions in the Q&A specifically around this. So if you are an admin user on an account, that means you have been granted some form of an admin permission where Evan was um, just at at the uh, user permissions. So, you know, you can really break down an account and you can give specific administrative permissions and maybe restrict other permissions. So in today's webinar, if, if you don't see something within your admin settings, it just might mean that you haven't been granted that specific permission. Um, so that one thing to highlight there. And then also there was another question about the e-signature. So Evan was in there, you can grant somebody, if you do have it on your account, you have a premium or higher account, you can grant the permission to um, send documents out for electronic signature. And that's gonna be right under the user access right there. So wanted to just highlight that for the couple uh, people in, in the webinar today that had that question. Nice. Yeah, to just highlight that, if you think of the roles, there's the account owner, that's you know who the account is set up under. That's the account owner. That's person like top person for the account from uh, you know being able to cancel, being able to even change for that matter. Administrators. That's like an employee user type. So all those various permissions can grant granular administrative privileges, but there's no checkbox for admin. And then the other is that super user group that Greg talked about, which is a designated group 
more for the folders of download, upload, delete, share. So just making them admins at the folder level. So from a user permission standpoint, if we're looking at the types of users that we have and the types of permissions, there's general type settings here. So again, being able to change account-wide permissions on the account, files and folders. So again, pretty explanatory for some of them that might be more of an admin type setting could be you know being able to edit billing information, uh, being able to edit reporting or access reporting. Some of these various settings will give someone an admin type capability because you know to be able to edit billing or to set up connectors or to manage single sign-on, you know that's something that is an admin type setting. So there are various ways that you guys can go about doing that, and something that we have and again a, a great knowledge base article uh, that I can share with you guys just around user roles and permissions in ShareFile. Uh, but yeah, that would wrap it up from the user management perspective. I think the only other thing I wanted to talk about are what, have, what are some of those things that you are unable to control? So going back into login and security policy, there are two options here that you cannot control yourself, but you can work with us and our support team to enable. So one of them is terms and conditions. If you have third parties and you need to make sure that they're adhering to specific regulations, uh, or if you're someone that used to have custom login text and we made some updates, you know, or if you're in any instance that you need someone to approve uh, the settings for their before they interact with data in this share file instance, we can set up terms and conditions for your account. It will be displayed on the login page and has a 24 hour token for your users. I have one set up on my account uh, right now. So I, it didn't grant me that because I'm me, uh, but that's something to look into. The other one is IP restrictions. So just to talk about this one quickly, uh, we do allow the ability to limit account access to things like domains. So creating users with specific domains, blocking specific domains. Again, it's more just to log into ShareFile. It's a global setting. And then the other one is IP restrictions. So again, it's a global setting that can be tailored for uh, restricting employees and or client users or all to set limitations of deny all or to allow only specific subsets. So if you only want internal connections, or you can blacklist as far as like deeming which ones you want to deny from being able to access your account. Something else that you can work with our support team on uh, and something to, to look into you might see within the login security policy on your account. Outside of that, that should be everything from the admin perspective, I think from a top level. Uh, can't harp more on just clicking on this icon and understanding that we do provide you access to our resources around getting started. Features that are new, we are sending marketing emails around this, but you can also get that information in here. But as you see, great one-stop shop if you have something quick that you need to see for how-tos, support articles, and again, to get in contact or book time uh, with your CSE so that you can have a more focused type session. I think the call to action is, you know, think through how you guys want to administer and, and set up ShareFile and uh, you know, reach out to us if you guys want to go through and, and determine and come up with a plan for that. But I'll stop there. Yep. All right, well, that does it from my end.